The following video contains content and opinions that some may find odd, offensive, or otherwise inappropriate for human consumption. Please watch and comment at your own risk. Hi everybody, it's Al with another video. I know in my last video I kind of mentioned that I wasn't going to do one of these full videos in the green room. Well, the office is currently occupied, so unfortunately I'm left with very few options. So, as you can tell, I'm sporting my jazz hat, and that's because they won today. So, that means that they ended up defeating the Clippers in seven games. Uh, they're moving on to the next round of the NBA playoffs, which is exactly what this video is about. So without further ado, let's get started. So in the Eastern Conference, uh, we have Boston versus Washington in the second round. We did see a little bit of some really physical play. I would hesitate to call it chippy at the moment. The Celtics uh, came out victors in game one. <laughs> I'm going with Celtics in six, just for the simple fact that I don't see Washington being able to handle Isaiah Thomas or really anybody for that matter. I think Isaiah and John Wall cancel each other out, and that leaves Boston pretty much winning this one. The Cleveland Cavaliers are going to be facing the Toronto Raptors in the second round. And if that sounds familiar, it's because this was the matchup in the Eastern Conference Finals last year. Toronto does not have Bismack Biombo in this matchup. They do have Damari Carroll, which is a kind of feisty defensive player, I guess you could say. Cleveland is pretty much loaded at this point. They've got LeBron, they've got Love, they've got Kyrie Irving. They've got all the usual suspects and then a few others, namely Derwin Williams. I don't see Toronto even coming close. Cleveland's going to win this one in five. The San Antonio Spurs and the Houston Rockets. Matchup that I'm really looking forward to right now in this particular series is going to be how Clint Capella very little known Clint Capella is going to match up against the likes of LaMarcus Aldridge and Paul Gasol. How he does against those guys will probably determine just how far Houston is going to be able to go. San Antonio's been here before, hundreds of times seems like. I honestly don't see anybody taking Kawhi Leonard out of this matchup. I think San Antonio wins this one in six. And of course, the matchup that I'm looking forward to, the Golden State Warriors and the Utah Jazz. Now, I will preface what I'm about to say with this. The Jazz's primary goal this entire season, from the moment that they were unable to come to terms with Gordon Hayward on a contract extension, was to convince Gordon Hayward that staying here would be the best interests for him and his family, both as far as being able to win as well as financially. Financially, I think they've pretty much already shown that they're willing to go the extra mile for him. I mean, they've already pretty much said, we're going to sign you to a max deal no matter what. So five-year max deal for Gordon Hayward, somewhere in the $200 million range, is pretty much already all but done as far as the Jazz are concerned. It's just a matter of convincing Gordon as far as play on the court that the Jazz are going to be a better option as opposed to, say, Boston. And I think they accomplished that goal. And I'll tell you why. The Jazz were not expected to get this far in the playoffs by anybody other than the fans, obviously. Nobody in the national media thought the Jazz had any chance of winning 50 games. They won 51. Nobody in the national media thought the Jazz were going to be a good defensive team. They were number two defensively in the entire NBA. And nobody thought that they were going to beat the Clippers in the first round of the playoffs. 
and they just did. So I think that's going to show Gordon Hayward a lot as far as convincing him that this is going to be the place to stay. He has camaraderie with a lot of the teammates here, particularly Rudy Gobert and Joe Ingles who's also a free agent. I don't see him leaving. So I think mission accomplished on that end and they can continue to grow. That being said, I would love to be the Utah Jazz homer in this particular you know, scenario and say, oh, they're going to win in seven games. I think they do make a series out of this one a lot closer than anybody could ever predict. But at the end of the day, the Warriors have way too much firepower. They have Curry, Clay Thompson, Kevin Durant, Draymond Green. The list goes on and on. Their bench unit's probably going to be the thing that's going to keep them out of blowing the Jazz out of the water every single game. But in the end, really hate you saying this now. <sighs> Warriors in six. So that's all the time I have on this video. Uh, I don't really have anything else to add to the conversation. I'll probably have another video, per particularly about the NFL draft, uh, probably sometime later this week. But in the meantime, if you could please submit all of your questions to this email right here. I would greatly appreciate it. I would also greatly appreciate you liking this video if you liked it, as well as subscribing to my channel where I drop some of these videos about once a week, give or take. But until then, this is Owl signing off. Have a nice day. Richard Baron, a WTF production.